Hello folks, just thought I'd just do a little uh, interim video uh, today. Uh, as I might have mentioned last week, I said I was going to uh, sort my little range out. I was going to send it back so I've got 20 odd instead of 18. Well, I've done that. Uh, I'll show you what I did, how I did it. So if you're interested in making your own... Uh, little safe backstop range this is one way I can do it uh, basically it's made up of uh, 45 centimeter slabs and some 2x4 battens now it's entirely up to you I do this uh, I mean some people just get the slabs make a square out of them and con concrete them in place but the way I've made mine is I've made it so uh, it can be moved if you want to so I've built a framework where the slabs will slot in and they're basically two slabs wide so that's 90 centimeters wide uh, that's that's across the back and they've got uh, 45 centimeter sides and they've actually got a, a roof to it as well because the way it works is uh, put your targets right to the back of the actual uh, target catcher and then uh, when the pellet hits the target it's got nowhere to go apart from hitting the black stop and if it's a, if it's a lead pellet it's just going to splatter and drop uh, if you're going to use BBs it's not ideal unless you then fill it with sand so if you're going to use BBs unless you're using something like dust devils which explode or a BB that's uh, made out of lead I wouldn't use uh, steel BBs on it, it's dangerous, it'll just fly back at you. Uh, I don't use BBs, I just don't like the things, they're not accurate. It might be right for having fun plinking, but I, I can't understand why people use them. Uh, so, basically, I made a framework out of the uh, 2x4. Uh, it's just the right size actually to I1 two before flat and then put another one on top of it standing upright like that so you can screw it from underneath and then there's enough room now for the slab to go on the bit in the middle uh, so that's how I did the back I did the sides the same and then at the front I've done basically on upright and crossbar and that allows the slabs to slot on the outside of the frame work at the front uh, and uh, it's held by the bottom and then just put two slabs on top and it's fine then also I've adapted my targets because the targets I did have I've got uh, the beer knacker cracker uh, and that can be set up two ways you can either stick it in into the ground or you can uh, hold it at a right angle and it can go on a flat surface <clears throat> so rather than have them stuck in the ground I've done it at a right angle and then I put it on a wooden batten then so it's standing just proud of the floor uh, with the crow target I've got that's basically a, a spiked crow as well that's sticking the ground what I've done with that I've cut it through off way through the metal and then got it in the vice and bent it so it's at a right angle and then I drilled that into a batten as well, uh, long ways, and then it's got two cross bars of wood each end, so it's standing flat also. Uh, the framework I've got for the target, I've also drilled a hole in each side, and uh, I don't know, you've probably seen on some of my old videos where I make spinners out of spoons, well, I've got a spinner on each side of that, made out of spoons. Uh, fairly easy to make, uh, you just get a teaspoon, uh, get it in a vise and a pair of plies and twist it around so you've got the edge of the uh, spoon facing you like that and then the, the actual spoon at the bottom in front and then you drill a hole through the, uh, the bottom of the spoon onto uh, a bolt and then it spins when you hit it. So I've done that. Also on the uh, knacker cracker bit I've uh, I've improved the actual uh, knacker cracker 
bits. It's, uh, it just comes with elastic bands. Well, you know, if you have got elastic bands, they perish every time. So uh, I've got a box of springs, and I've used springs on that, and that's working fine now. So when I hit it, it'll probably stay up, and then I can hit it again, it'll come back down. So we'll see what happens. What I've got out today, I've got the Air Arms S200. I've took my uh, multi shot magazine in and put my single shot tray back in. See how it's handling. This is one of my favourite rifles because of the uh, way it performs. Really good. Pick, pick them up second hand for two or three hundred quid, but they'll shoot as well as a thousand pound rifle. So, uh, one thing with the actual target when you make it out of slabs what you must do when you've finished it is paint the inside of it white and that uh, that reflects the light into the actual box itself and you can see your silhouettes on your targets very easily so uh, you must paint it on the inside white if you want to uh, see what you're shooting at so uh, there's the view down range and uh, I'll test it out. Uh, I'm now shooting, I'm, I'm at 20 yards away now. If I go into the house, I can get 23 to 25 yards from inside, but uh, at least I'm, I'm out to, to a even 20 now rather than 18 all the time. You'll see down there that there's sand on the ground <coughs> just past the, uh, the grit. Well, that was the former sandbank that I had. So uh, let's get on with the test. I'm going to start off by topping the rifle up. Let's top to uh, 190 bar. And then one less 200. Do a nice and slow, you don't overeat. 190. Let's do off the uh, air tank. Pull out the probe. Tighten the uh, lead valve up on the tank, and that's it. That's the reason in today's test are the uh, GSB exact jumbo heavies that. Uh, 18.13 grains. The scope I'm using on this is the 4 to 12 by 50 Wolf scope. It's an illuminated scope as well. Make 
sure the uh, target cam was going. Target. Going to the left around the seven o'clock. So this state is uh, one clip quarter inch at 100 yards, so uh, 20 yards. It's equivalent to five clips, I believe. Two to the right. I'm going to adjust if we need to, you know. place to the uh, top of the oven. Left yellow. Left center. Right center. left spinner and 
and that's why I need a red cover for these. and I could crack it with it. Okay then, so that's the new backstop pallet trap. Hope it's given you some ideas. And if you want to shoot in your backyard, 
you need something like that. You don't want to be shooting in front of a panel fence because these things will go right through it. So uh, always make sure you're safe. That's the main thing around. So, coming up next week, we've got three new rifles. All three are day stays. Two are from the Rob Taylor collection, and this first one is from uh, Dave Oldham's collection. Uh, here's a little preview of what they're like. So we'll catch you in the next video.